It is probably, uh, one of my relatives says that Minnesota has about six perfect days a year, and this is undoubtedly one of those perfect days. So the fact that you would choose to be here in Oakland Junior High today is really remarkable. Thank you for coming. I know you struggled with parking, and so thank you. I'm assured that no tow truck is going to move those cars out there on 15 on Manning. So we are very grateful to have all of you here today. So thank you very much. Um, you could also be at the State Fair right now ordering a Prano Pop. And probably some of you are planning to go there. My husband says, hey, it's the cleanest day of the fair. We've got to get out there. So you might see us out there. Um, I don't know if our kids made it to the forum. They're probably at the fair right now. So uh, thanks so much. We've had a great summer. I mean, we were able to bring Brett Favre in to wear his number four jersey here for the Vikings. That's a great summer down here. Maybe I opened up a can of worms, but we've got Brett Favre here, and um, we have a PGA here, which is extremely exciting. We have Tiger Woods, and uh, there was a rumor that this week... Health, health, health care. Health care. Well, we're going to talk about health care. But uh, there was a rumor that President Obama was going to have uh, Tiger Woods play Mark golf with him on Martha's Vineyard this week when he was on vacation. And uh, I don't think there's any truth to that rumor, but we had also heard that the president may ask to try and hit him up for a three three hundred trillion dollar loan, which maybe we could use about now here in our economy. So anyway, we're very grateful that all of you are here. So thank you for that. Um, as we're looking at the context of the debate today, uh, one thing that we're looking at is the fact that out. We do want to have reform in health care. There's, there's total unanimity. There is total agreement. I don't know anyone, and Dr. Burgess, who's joining me here on the dais today, I don't know anyone in Congress who wants the status quo. We want reform, and we want to change the way that Washington does business on health care. And for a new way to do it, but the question is, what kind of reform will it be, and will it be one that we can live with in the long term? We have to have it. But the question is, will we go down a road where all of you have more control over your health care, more decision-making authority, where we can actually reduce costs, or will we take a road where government has more authority over our health care, and government has the say over our health care decisions? and one where we lose the authority over costs, but government picks up that authority. That's really the crux of where this debate begins. And that's why we're so anxious to hear your opinions. Again, pro or con, we want to be able to be here to hear your uh, opinions. And a robust debate has been taking place across the country. And uh, thank goodness the 6th District is no different. You want to be heard as well. So before we discuss the different paths that are available to us, I just want to lay a little bit of context about where we are right now financially in the country. Because health care is smack in the middle of our financial system that we're currently dealing with. And the President has said quite clearly, and I believe him in his word, that he wants to have health care reform because he wants to control costs. And again, I think that is unanimous agreement. We want to control costs. There's a difference in how we approach it and a difference about what we believe will control costs and what can con will control costs. But we are at a truly perilous time economically in America. Uh, the policy chair of the National Center for Policy Analysis is a gentleman named Mike Whalen. And Mike Whalen wrote, the United States is functionally bankrupt. And he says that, uh, he says that we are, even before we consider this multi-trillion dollar health care bill that is currently before the House, it's known as H.R. 3200. Tuesday, you probably saw on the news that the White House released the updated budget numbers, and they read kind of like a Stephen King novel. They're very scary, the budget numbers, because the administration is projecting a deficit this year of $1.6 trillion. That's a lot of money, that level of deficit. Just earlier this year, the White House predicted we would be $7 trillion in debt in the next 10 years. Well, just consider, between the first part of the year and today, now the Congressional Budget Office is estimating a $9 trillion deficit, potentially 10. 
That's a tremendous increase in debt level. And we have, I believe, this out, if you picked up some of the literature that we have on the tables, this, sometimes we can sometimes uh, uh, get confused when we hear the terms millions, billions, trillions. What does that mean? Well, let's just take an example. A million seconds is 11 and a half days. A billion seconds is 32 years. A trillion seconds is 32,000 years. There's a big difference between billions and trillions. And when our country continues to spend money with no thought as to how we're going to pay for it, it's the 19 and 20 year olds in our society that are going to be saddled with that debt. The borrowing costs, the spending costs, the taxing costs. We have to consider that generation. And if you took a tightly stacked uh, $100 bill packs, the, uh, if they totaled a million dollars, it would be about four feet high. But if you had a billion dollars, that would be 4,000 feet high, or equivalent to three Sears towers tax stacked on top of each other. That means if you had $100 bills that total a trillion dollars, it would be 789 miles high, or 144 Mount Everest stacked on top of one another. So these numbers add up, that's the point. They add up and they mean something. And so as we look at the context of healthcare, we have to consider the cost. Because we also 